Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. Hello, Dave. Happy Sunday. Hello. And for all of you who are new here, this is This and That, where we discuss everything figure skating. So be sure to subscribe below, hit that notification bell, ring the bell, and smash that like button. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. And Jonathan, <laughs> you are off of Worst Cooks America, and I you am. are back here. That yeah. judge did not like you. That no, Bobby Flay, Bobby Flay was not a fan. <laughs> well, we're big fans of you here. He had no... Thank you. He didn't like your puns. He didn't like... Um, what was it? Oh, your glaze. Too much glaze. I like a lot of glaze. So. You know what happened, Dave? A little insider secret. <laughs> I put... They don't tell you the amounts. Like, when you're watching... And Bobby Flay, like, kind of eyeballs his amounts. You know, because he's a professional, like, chef. So I put way too much oil in some mix, and so it continued to melt. Like, the longer it waited, it was just kind of expansive. And then I thought, oh, it's a zumper. He just thought he was just mad, okay? He yeah. was very yeah. mad and wanted no more Jonathan. But I wanted more Jonathan on the show. Thank you, Dave. I wanted more Jonathan on the show as well. <laughs> you know what? I'm really glad I don't have to watch the show anymore. So. You know, it wasn't a show I had seen until they asked me to be on it. Mm -hmm. I know we had this conversation, and um, and there it remains. So. <laughs> All right. Things I do want to watch. Nathan Chen's sh uh, Free Skate this season, okay? Especially the footwork sequence. Yes. the reg Okay, cool. so he's doing an Elton John program. And because the Elton John movie was out this summer, I still didn't see it. I, I didn't so either. And I didn't hear much about it, which is funny because I think he's actually an incredible entertainer. It's funny. I went, they had one of those visual, like, virtual marketing things where you could go inside and, like, listen to Elton John music and, like, hear the Sony surround sound down in the village. Okay. And... I don't know, it was like kind of <laughs> fine. Um, it was like kind of unnecessary. We'll just wait till Nathan does it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you could also like dress up in Elton John costumes and take pictures of yourself. But it didn't make me want to see the movie. I was just like, oh, it's hot out. Uh, oh, <laughs> I saw it the same day we saw you judging the Miss New York pageant because I took Michael McDonald oh, to... Oh, scholarship competition. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I took him to the Museum of Plastic. Oh, Okay. But I work in a city now where we can only drink bottled water, so he can't yell at me. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, anyway. okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, people are going to be like, you can fill up with your Brita at home. God, skating fans. Okay. Yeah, anyway, exactly. <laughs> Nathan Chen, Marie-France Dubray did the program. I think, like, the beginning of the program, it's like a jump drill, like mm -hmm. most free skates seem to be. And then we have Nathan really getting in touch with, like, his bad self. I love it. There is a move okay. where he like goes a little bit like maybe cheesy into like thug. Like are those like Street Fighter gloves? Like was that the Street Fighter? I'm not sure. He lost you in that moment. <laughs> okay. There's always a vibe. Do you, you ever see the movie Mean Girls? Mm-hmm. You know when like the guy in the math leads Kevin G was a rapper? That I'm not going to remember well enough to remember that, but he, when Lindsay Lohan like joins the math leads because she's good at math and getting in touch with her authentic self, like he's like a real like, and he does that move, <laughs> and when Nathan does it, it's all I can think about. I'm like, just seems a bit forced. Yeah, but I kind of love it at the same time. I okay, love that okay. They're kind of amping up like the camp factor and kind of like bringing the performance quality more to men skating than just trying to be like a Todd Eldridge show, like soldier. Like, they're really getting in touch with their bad selves. Well, and I think that, like, given Nathan's performance opportunities, tour opportunities, you see him feel more comfortable to go a little kooky, a little overboard, a little more caricature in a positive way, in an entertaining way, I think. Well, he um, is, like, the real deal. Like, it's him yeah. and Hanyu, and he does right. have two world titles, and a like, right. Grand Prix final titles and yeah but i think most of this development is really happening from the constant touring oh yeah i think it's everything yeah. compounding yeah like, i think it's the success the and the constant touring getting more in touch with his artistic self it's all building on top of each yeah. other so yeah I, I feel like he and hanyu are really separating themselves from the pack as we watch this but yeah yes it's all the, and then we saw him do the backflip. I think he could do a Syria backflip on one foot. I would like to see Yeah, the kind of hype he got on it compared to other people, I was like, oh, this is like 
quite stunning. Yeah, and why not a backflip quad toe combo? I would like to see that, okay? Just saying, just, just saying. saying. You know, I feel like we're opening up skating, we're trying to make it more modern, more viral moments, and I think mm. that this will help unless all the music gets blocked. And if the music gets blocked, then we'll see... Oh, more right? right? It's a problem already. Because YouTube is, like, all into blocking stuff. And then, like, some of the different music... Companies. And I understand a little bit why they have to do that. Like, they don't just want all of these artists' songs just out there, necessarily. But it's... That's not this. Yeah. You know what I mean? No one's like showing you like a bootleg free copy of this song on YouTube. This is a public performance. And like... if consider the secondary audio track uh, when it's a TV broadcast. So okay. in a TV broadcast, the commentary is considered audio track number one. This is okay. considered audio track number two. And that's how they get around the rights issue at times. At times. Because yeah. like, remember, the, the worst was when Patrick did... Um, Blackbirds oh, or yeah, whatever like that short you yeah. could never get it yeah it was it was well, and then they go in and out and then it further perpetuates what drives me nuts which is like just skate and who cares what the music is yeah like, like to yeah. yeah exactly and then i love that shoma uno and david wilson are really um appealing to like the gay club kids and all of us by skating to a cover of Robin dancing on my own. I but I wanted to talk to you because you sent me that first. Right, because I figured you didn't know who Robin was. You were correct. Yeah. And when I listened to it, I thought, now this is the, he's doing a cover of this one. Mm -hmm. But I thought, okay, I'm here for this. It was a little redundant and actually a little subtle in its own way in, within that kind of genre. And he's on um, top. Who is the Shoma? We need to oh, rein completely. Him in. Yeah, completely. But so the idea of like a clubby song totally worked intellectually to me. Yeah. Then I listened to the Robin, and then I did recognize that song. I was like, okay, I do know this. But then you sent me the cover. Yeah. That. What do you think? I think the cover has nothing. I mean, it was popular. Yeah. It has like three hundred million views on Vivo YouTube. I, um. I just don't think it has much for a skating program. Like a skating program I has agree. highs and lows to it. And I'm not sure how, maybe this will help him be a little bit more subtle because he really picks music that's like in your face and he loves to go all out. Maybe this will help him control his skating a little bit. I don't know where he's gonna put his big cantilever moment and his like Paul Wiley equivalent of a knee slide, but I think it might, Rain show me. It's a bit uh, understated. And I, I wanted to talk to, I was actually going to wait till we talked about um, Keegan, actually. <laughs> but I'm sure, you know, in the early 90s when I first started coming to skating, and then when you even go back, this these very uh, formulaic medleys. Yeah. Start off with a bang, give us a slow ballad section, end big and cinematic. Yeah. Um, and you know, at times that got a little hokey. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure when people first decided to do just one track, mm -hmm. it was kind of a cool idea. But now that we have so many people just skating one whole program to one whole piece, one mood, one level, it becomes a bit monotonous. Yeah, And that's what I fear might happen in this program. Yeah, I think a lot with the IJS programs, they're either, like some of the top men can do them really well, but I think, mm -hmm. It's either really good or really bad. And then sometimes it's a jump drill for the first part and then they end the last 90 seconds really well. Right. Especially like last year with Nathan. Like they haven't really figured out a consistent balance with it. Although when you watch the old skating, some of it was like all schlock and there's just kind of no excuse for that. But right. I think the cream does rise to the top. Especially I think that we were in an era where Shoma, Hanyu, and Nathan are the best at kind of combining the athleticism and the artistry and they're kind of pushing it forward where I really think that they're in one class although Shoma is so flippant inconsistent but when he's at his best he they're kind of in this one class and then you have like the Vincents who are chasing they don't have the full package so they have to do more jumps or try harder or you have a person yeah. like Kolyada who in my opinion has that whole package just can't ever deliver it or Aliyev, you know, I respond oh, well, so much yes, I know, but, but probably not as physically gifted yes. as Kolyada. But yes, I, I was biting my tongue trying not to say his name. But if you can't deliver it, you can't be in the, If you can't ever deliver it, you can't be in that 
that top group. Even Shoma, with his inconsistencies, yeah. has world medals and Olympic medal. You know, like he's in his own category. He's in the yeah. WTF category. What's going to go? That's up? right. Yeah. Right. So my he, column of frustrating artists. <laughs> he's going to have like a very forward short program and then a more understated free. I think it could be interesting with him and David Wilson together. Mm -hmm. I prefer when David Wilson works with like a Sandra Marie Franz. I think that's been his, some of his best stuff lately. I'm still traumatized by Jason's um, program last season. Not so yeah. sure what's going to happen there. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. We're going to have to... Given, given Marie France's work with Nathan... I would I would be intrigued to see what a Shoma and Nathan uh, um, a Shoma and Marie France collaboration was like. Oh, speaking of Jason, you know how he's doing Schindler's List. So right. during the, during the gymnastics nationals, it was like all of this like hokey happy music. I saw your tweet. I, I I understood what you meant. And there were like two fans that tried to like stir drama, but they had pictures of like a Jap. It was like a picture of Rika Kihira as her Twitter handle, and then. They were trying to say that I was being offensive, and I'm like, you know that Satoko is skating to Schindler's List this season, and Jason Brown. So, either they're and we're talking to... not about yeah, we're talking about a change in mood, not yeah, like we want Schindler's everyone List to happen. Everyone wants to be so everyone wants to be so offended all the time, but it's it's not always that correct. That wasn't yeah. That. So <clears throat> anyway, it is what it is. So I'll tell you. The other music that I'm not sure about is. Daisuke Takahashi. Love it. <laughs> you do? Weird, right? No, the only, my... I need to see it. Is this going to be like Sam Schwinard, like edited with other like interlude music from Audio Galaxy I, that we're like? I think it's going to have to because I actually love the drive and I love the like the mood of the piece. But it's like it, yelling. But again, rock. that's a long sustaining mood. It's like yelling rock that would work for a like footwork sequence but are we right. but if that's the and I, because the entire song we were listening to the version was just non-stop unrelenting at and max so work. if they do use that it could never work but I think they're probably gonna edit it and probably. he's so talented that I think that he is in the obviously in the top category with Nathan yeah. and Shoma and Hanyu, where he's really going to be pushing this performance quality. I mean, he has more than any of them. Um, I'm sorry, Hanyu fans, but Daisuke is the greatest performer, maybe of the last. Uh, literally, years. I mean, just my absolute all-time. He's favorite. just giving but, you know, all of his emotion. If like, he's worried about the jumps and stuff, which understandably he would be, I, I don't know how that will water down. Look, he's going to be trying hopes. to do one quad. Hopefully, if he's smart, like one quad keep it clean and right. make it through. And have a beautiful moment. Yeah, and we'll give you all the grades of execution and all of the components, and we'll still put you ahead of Nam and Keegan and all these people. Right? right? Yeah. Like, Coming up on this and that. <laughs> Coming, yeah. So I, yeah, I would, I don't know. I'm not sure about this music. I want to see Okay. It. Also, he's working with Misha Gee. G, Misha. Me, he's working with Misha. And I have to say, this is important for Misha because I haven't been in, like super he's a young choreographer he's still developing I'm like I think he's got a lot of potential I wasn't wowed by Evgenia's Tosca last season I thought the edit was horrible I thought it was ridiculous. well and I think there were probably limitations and how quickly that had to happen also but it's interesting because even though skater, Evgenia was trying to bring more of her own you know, concept to things yeah. now in her skating in general, Daisuke has a real point of view already. Yeah. So, so I think, I, think, I, think I wonder if it's an extra set of eyes to brainstorm with instead of tell me what to do. Yeah. And I'm glad that he didn't just use Benoit. Is Benoit on the outs? I didn't even know there was like a Benoit controversy about a Nina Simone song and that was a whole thing too. I didn't, I missed that. Someone was oh, asking I didn't me about that. Any. That was a Twitter controversy. So are we still mad at Benoit? People need to comment about that. I'm not so sure. I, I just be like... Oh, what, what was the issue there? I don't know. Just that he used a Nina Simone song they felt was inappropriate? I think the particular Nina Simone song was inappropriate. Oh. I don't... Who... Well, I mean, there's a lot of racially charged music that she... I mean, a lot of message music that she... I'm a huge fan of Nina Simone. Yeah, but, but... I don't... But she's a person that could speak about racially charged. I don't. Right. I don't Correct. Know. Yeah. Like if you if you maybe accidentally... he was using it out of context. 
I'm not yeah. sure. I don't know the particular controversy. I, apparently it was a thing, and I don't know how okay. to sleep that week. So I'm not so sure what was going on there, but... He Let us know below. <laughs> it's like a Japanese skater skating to the Holocaust. What? Like, this yeah. one is... the. I think maybe there was some some of that going on with him. Okay, so, got it, got it. Know. He's Benoit, and he's only in black and white and on Instagram, and it's artsy. Okay, he had Jeremy skate in that, like... Hood, like he was gonna rob a bank. Like he's a weird dude. Okay, like, let's be, he's French and a choreographer and like okay. a low-level ice dancer. Like he's gonna be weird. Okay, he's like. Now, having said that, and I know we'll get to it later. I thought I do see potential. Did he did he do the shorts for Cowrie? Probably, yeah. They always work together. So yeah, I, I I think that one might actually work for her though. You are such a Tanya Harding lover. I wrote down that this is pure Tanya and Midori and that we are just not working on her posture at all. So. I, oh yeah, I didn't say it was artistic. I meant if you were given Kauri as is, this was a good vehicle to like mask some things. I wanted smelling salts. Okay, anyway. Okay. But, um, <laughs> I, look, when she, we'll, we'll save it. We'll yeah, save we'll get there, we'll okay? get there. Okay. Because we need to talk about, it is now public that Deanna Stellato is skating with Maxim Duchamps. Uh, they are working in Montreal. Uh, Megan and Bruno um, put them together before they moved to uh, Toronto. So, but this was not supposed to be public. So the thing is, is that Deanna has to get released from the USFS and they don't know how long she's going to be. And the USFS doesn't really have a a clear set of rules about how long they're going to keep you. They can, they can try to play hardball with you and keep you for like two years or even longer to try to prevent to release you. And the thing is, is that there are all sorts of like settlements. Like Emmy Ma allegedly may have paid back any money that they put into her to go to a junior. I see. Yeah. To get released, so she can just be like, bye, and. It's, there's like a lot of power that they have when you're trying to change countries. But the problem Deanna had is that they don't actually have any partners for her to skate with. The only person who was available what, that could do triple jumps was Ian Mays in California, who is, was 17, turning 18 years old. And Deanna turned 36. So unless they're going to skate to The Graduate, as their free skate okay. was... Okay, Harold and Maude, okay. This was inappropriate. So, okay. And the USFS knows that they didn't have anyone for her to skate with, but they still will probably, because I think that this is a promising partnership, they may try to play hardball. Also, Nate um, had to have knee surgery and is not even back skating and is was likely going to be finished, and that's why they kind of had to end their partnership. And plus... I, I think if you have eyes, you kind of saw that Deanna and Jim didn't really get along. So yeah, they um, went as far as they were maybe going to go. Yeah. So yeah. they didn't. That partnership was over, and they needed to do something. And apparently, she looks like apparently Maxim Duchamp is like strong like an ox, and she's working with scary and amazing Jose Picard. And what I always love is that when I went to film she's she's a secret to me like I, I hear the buzzings about her like antics and this like crazy life force energy that she has but i have to say for as as fascinating as she seems she kind of stays out of that public eye in my experience because she's semi-retired right? okay and she's quebecois and they're like their own force mm -hmm. i was just at the jersey shore and i was remembering that when i was a kid Everyone from Quebec loved to go to Wildwood. Like, they loved it. And I was like, why is everyone from Quebec going? And they're a weird energy. Remember, like, J.S. Ligari. Not friendly, kind of arrogant. Um, <coughs> kind of off-putting. Uh, you know, like, that weird Quebecois energy. Like, the women, like, sometimes don't shave their pits because they're, like, pretend to be, like, in Europe. Like, it's just like, oh, the men are wearing Speedos on the beach in America. Like, it's all just, like, a really... It's a different culture. It's a different yeah. culture. and you're like, you're from Canada. You're not from Paris. Calm yourself. You're not that sophisticated. But anyway, <coughs> love the Quebec. And they all have that, like, very circular skating technique. The girls are always sleeveless dresses with, like, big muscular arms. 
I think we like that Jose Picard is still at her competition weight and she's like semi-retired and mm -hmm. she's the kind of person that is going to go home and watch videos of your training and like see mm -hmm. how she's going to improve you for tomorrow. It's like that and Deanna like working together. That's interesting. That's, that's yeah. It was either going to be a super fit or a super not. She, and she coached like 20. So when I went to visit Juliana and Charlie, first of all, do you know that every road in Montreal is named like the same effing thing? It's all like road by the water or road by, it's like Rue, oh. like. Yeah. So Isn't that just like saying street? Yeah, like street by the. Th thanks, Jonathan. You sing in multiple languages and can recognize. Yeah, no, no. Okay, thank you. Yes, this was actually an episode. Are so sophisticated. Okay. This was, a, this was an episode of the Jersey Shore when they went to Florence, and because they're like, we're always on the Via Road. What, what are you? Oh, oh, you're a reality TV star now. You're watching the Jersey Shore. Oh, I no, got this it. was like a decade ago. Oh, yeah. So you were watching this, Mr. Sophisticated Jonathan? Like, okay, all right. It was a character study. Yeah, it was okay. a character study. <laughs> all right. So anyway, As we considered for the role of Snooky in an upcoming production. So anyway, I was using the Waze app and it just like kept like okay. going the wrong way. And also didn't know where this place called Guedbois was. Like it didn't exist. So anyway, it was like French Canadian ghetto. Um, uncharted. Uncharted. Yes, uncharted. Uncharted. So you had to like leave the island to go to where like Julianne and Charlie were skating. And it was like, even though I was there to see the team, like I was there to see Jose Picard. Like definitely yeah. got that vibe like immediately. It was like- And what was that vibe when you experienced I it? mean, scary, <laughs> strong-willed Canadian energy. Like just okay. amazing. She okay. definitely let it be known that she used to work with Caitlin Osman, like she made her. And then it was sure. her energy yeah. that she used to work with, like all the teams she put Born in Kratz together. Marie France and Page. She worked with Bruno Marcotte and his sister Julie. Like, definitely, she was like, I have made Canadian skating. I coached them all. Oh, she was the one who coached Brasseur and Eisler. Like, all of it. Like, there, like, she. I, yeah, I knew her primarily from Brasseur and Eisler. She managed And then, Lloyd. only recently, Julianne and Charlie. I think Lloyd's life fell apart after he was no longer with Jose. Like, I think she kept that together. So, okay. ruled that with an iron fist and everyone seems to respect and fear her at the same point in time. And I, I kind of love it. I, okay. She was very tan and very just amazing. Amazing, <laughs> okay? Just like, a force of energy, yeah, okay, force. okay. And I think she's only their part-time coach. They're also working with this guy, Ian, who had worked with uh, Bruno before because Bruno and Megan, because um, they don't have any funding. And Bruno and Megan like are in Toronto, and I think... Yeah, like Skate Canada's not getting behind it? Well, not yet, because they haven't done anything yet. So when you're in a yeah. new partnership and you're in a new country, you have no funding. Like, you are... Yeah, that's So they tough. could not move to Toronto yet, and I think they're quite happy with their situation. But apparently he's strong like an ox. If You can watch videos of him at Four Continents with this girl. Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, they'll probably have a big twist, a nice Canadian death spiral, and some good lifts. So if they can land the jumps, this could be very promising. So, Exciting. But, Jonathan, they are working with your favorite choreographer, Julie Picard. <laughs> I mean, I, truly, I mean, like, obviously she's fine. But we're going we're gonna to talk about her later with KMT, because I'm assuming KMT's program is still her. Yes, it is. Yeah. I, and, and now... They've taken, you know, what they used to do where they would just like... Pause it. We're talking about Deanna. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Jonathan, you're just going to go on a rant. Okay. I know. I was like, just going to like go there. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. And you know what? I'm excited for this team, but the best is that this information was not supposed to be public. So there is a Canadian fan. Who blew it? <laughs> and Christopher Scott, data okay. fan, like internet legend. He goes back like 25 years on the internet. He is the most stereotypical Canadian fan I have ever seen. Okay. Um, he is a teacher. He's a gymnastics judge who is like a stickler. He's the kind of teacher where if, you're, if your steps aren't all correct, he's not giving you the problem. Okay. He's shinamanoing. <laughs> okay. He's like shinamanoing, especially for Americans, because he really has that Canadian... Um, right. Younger sibling. It's, except for when it comes to a Canadian, because he like thinks it's amazing when Ellie Black wins a gymnastics medal. 
and is loved. Well, that is amazing that uh, she's won a Oh, no, no, he's medal. like, Ellie's amazing. Meanwhile, if she were an American, he would be deducting for every form error and everything and pretending right. that she's hideous. Okay. But she's Canadian, so loves her. Okay. But kind of all of Canada is like, they're like real younger siblings, yet they watch U.S. nationals like it's their own. Right. Except for when they beat us, then they are like, yay, Canada. So, okay. very earnest person, nice person, but a real stickler to the point where he's always judging my friend Dan's kids. And my friend Dan, like, just cannot hide, like, how annoyed he is. Because he's okay. always, Dan is convinced that he, like, hates his gymnast. So... And Dan's like doesn't know how to just like keep it breezy. I'm like okay, <laughs> <laughs> just be cool. So like, okay. I find it hysterical because. But wait, how did this? What, how does so, this boil down to him blowing it? So and he used to be on like the Vanessa Atler website. You, he used to like teach us about the code of points. Very smart guy. Very okay. smart. Knows his stuff inside and out. So of course he's the kind of the only person who would be checking this like random ass Canadian. Quebec competition for September probably maybe was going to go and he saw that it was listed now they weren't supposed to have their entry listed and they were the organizers were supposed to not list publicly that they were skating because it's kind of like an unwritten rule that you're not supposed to really compete until you have a uh, until you have a an answer one way or the other now of course the USFS is probably going to try to screw them over because this is a part this is like a promising partnership so they're probably going to try to block this. So they definitely didn't want this public because, like, I even mentioned that they were skating together and Megan, like, contacted me and then I had to put the video private and re-edit and re-upload it because, like, Megan was scary about this. And you don't want Megan yeah. and Hamill. Like, but now it's already out there. Well, now it's out there because Christopher Scott saw it, tweeted it, told Sylvia of Unseen Skaters, who's, like, that, like, force in the corner right. of the competition who, like, uploads everything and all information. And then it was on FSU, and it was like out there. And then ever all the gays are now like Deanna, yes, queen, because she's like the Liza Minnelli of skating. So, <laughs> and it was just so hysterical to me because like if anyone is going to break this, and of course he's excited because now a good American is Canadian, and they're going to have another strong team better than the U.S. in pairs. Of course, right. and this is going to wind up being a really promising team. It like just the whole sequence of events. Like you can't make it up. Like of course he's gonna find it. Of course the most obscure like event. Like have I'm, they been receiving backlash from it then? You know how the USFS is. They would love to screw everyone. Okay. Yeah. They they specialize in it, but they also have. There are so many stories brewing about the USFS. Uh, There's so many stories brewing that they really don't have a leg to stand on right now, especially right. because Deanna is twice the age of the only partner that they had available for her. Right. And you know Christine Brennan would love to go in on this. Like, you know right. she is waiting to crucify right. them. Like, yeah. just have them burning at the stake. Like, yeah. Like, her own Salem witch trials for the USFS. Like, she just cannot... Wait. You know that John Manley has her on, screen, uh, on speed dial and that she loves this sort of thing. It's like catnip to her. So yeah, I think okay. the USFS, they have to vote on it, but they have so many other problems that they are either going to let this one slide or they're going to try to dig in about it. Yeah. So we'll have to wait and see. But I think that this is a lot of entertaining energy. Have we seen videos? We have not seen videos, but okay. I think we can use our imagination. Work on acquiring some. <laughs> okay. Work on acquiring some, yes. Okay. Um, okay. I'm sure I'm sure it's all You know what? Back in the day, they could have gotten away with all of this and no one would have had any idea. Apparently they have a really big twi remember Megan and Bruno did tell us they looked good together the last time they yeah. When was that? So that was when the Grand Prix assignment She was pregnant. Out. Yeah. So it was Grand Prix assignments she told us about that they looked good. Yeah. So anyway there's that. And okay. Battle of the Blades is coming up. There's a lot going on in Canada. We have to keep our eye on there. That's going to be some good... And including, you blew my mind when you informed me who was going to be on this Canadian tour. Who? Velocious Armstrong. Oh, that's not Battle of the Blades. That's... Um, no, no, no. Sorry. I just thought we were talking about things happening in that's Canada. Rock the Rink, okay? They're having yeah. a big moment with but, Tessa and Scott. But there, I mean, there was such animosity between those two camps. Like... Just 
blows my mind. I mean, just against Canadian pairs in general, I felt there was a real... Pretty much just against Megan Duhamel. It seemed singularly focused. Like, I mean... Yeah, even that Nina Moza article that came out. Yeah. But it always seemed like they were very against her. Yet yeah, all the digs in that latest Nina Moser article where she was talking about how bad um, fourth place is, which I agree with her. Like, I would hate it too. I would understand the frustration uh, when you're almost there. But it, she was like, notice how the IJS has revised points. Basically, it was saying so that Duhamel and Radford won't meddle again. But also, if Tatiana and Vlad had ever, Tarasa Morozov had ever, like, Done a clean Applied program, themselves, yeah. Or not skated to something hideous, they might have had that medal. Like, they kind of blew it themselves because everyone right. was cheating for them. Everyone right. was giving them the points constantly, and they were just zero. Still couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't get it done. So I think there's both, like, both things are true there. Two opposing thoughts. So okay. Anyway, what I love is that Charlie White is going to be choreographing <laughs> the Rock the Ring tour. And if you recall, Tessa he was never the problem. <laughs> Tessa Virtue let it be known like 20 times that she just hated Meryl Davis. And even in the Tessa and Scott show, when Scott was like unable to lift Tessa, they just had like skinny Meryl looking over at the side. And the tension was just palpable. And definitely yeah. those producers picked up on it and just gave And edited it, it in. Yeah. Edited a Canadian hint. We're just yeah. a little bit of like. <laughs> but the Canadians are very sad because Tessa said in an interview that she heard from someone else before Scott that he got engaged. People are very worried about Tessa. They don't seem to realize that she's making so much money, has like And that her she's like life. a fierce woman who's like an incredible Mass competitor. Yeah. Like she doesn't need your you to worry about how she's hearing Scott's <laughs> engagement announcement. <laughs> yeah. Like I amazing. They're the co-workers who probably are apart from several months of the year and probably sometimes sick of each other after this many years, right? Like, I would imagine. Like, how long has she been holding his sweaty hand for? Like, come on. Right, she's yeah, like, exactly. I think she's Exactly. Okay. She's, she's had, like, she can hold it now. She's had <laughs> relationships over the years. I think they're okay. Like, yeah. Um, anyway, so let's discuss it because I just have a caveat for KMT and Michael Marinaro that I have always supported KMT and you are the hater. People love to group us together. Rude! And no, you hate every KMT program and actually- Oh, well, now that's not about her though. That's not about her. Right, but Jonathan, you hate every KMT program <laughs> and act like it's a new thing every time you see it and every Julie Marcotte program. And I actually think that the program is quite good. Although I don't know why they wouldn't just use Rihanna or perhaps Adam Rapon singing Love on the Brain. Why do we have to have a cover of it? And if we're gonna have a cover, why not Adam Rapon? Okay. Right. At that, you know, it's what the program deserves. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start with the positives. The dress great. made her look uh, long and lean and like great. It was But see that is yeah, because I want the I let the record show that I am a big supporter of her as a woman and I am a big supporter of her as an athlete. I think she's incredibly talented. Yeah. And did you see her face after it? That's what she's gonna think of you not liking her program. She seems like that. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> all right. And she does I don't know how she landed that throw that throw triple loop or whatever because now you know it became a thing when you know there was this upside down entry before the 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 That's throw very julie marcotte very and you know they were using it a lot in colorado also and then suddenly out of nowhere danny danny and tara started getting applause for them there's when they would do that and i was like i don't okay they've kind of turned it into a thing now this full-blown uh, entry to the throat looked like an aborted lift. Well, because they do the whole lift where like she almost like falls down his back. It's like, yeah. a cool concept that always almost looks like a mistake. It didn't work. It, it, to me, it just looks um, haphazard. And I don't know how she was really able to land it. Like, I, it seems so disorienting. I and I was intrigued like by the looked... entries. They have different entries into the, the triple toes. On purpose. That's that's Why? A because it's considered a more difficult transition and a higher level pair skating. So that's supposed to get you some street cred slash transition chore choreographic points with- To uh, enter differently. Yeah, because, um, Vanessa and Morgan did that last season in their program. With the Sao or whatever, right? But also with the toe. Um, okay. 
and Vanessa's entry wasn't so impressive. But right. um, but they on the cell cup. But they also did this, and it gives you like higher points. So it's like a trend uh, in pair skating, especially now that everyone is doing the same elements. Everyone's trying to stand apart uh, and stand out. And I think so. It's her job to spot him if you watch. And I yeah. think it just threw her when he was going to go like in competition. That may right. be something they have to like take out because I was watching this team and I was thinking like they don't have the big throw or the big twist or they don't have a wow element. Yeah. Their, I mean, their death spiral can be great. They only got a level three here, though. Their thing is they have to be really consistent and just skate really well. And unfortunately, he can be a little bumbly. Like, she's a great performer. And you can tell that this short program is all, like, her vision with Julie. And he's kind of, like, always messing up the groove. Like, nice guy, treats her well. Well, because even when the material is is there, his free leg, like, in the kick-up in the beginning, isn't quite there. And when he does, like, a balance shift in the, um, in some of their opening crossovers, you can tell it could be a beautiful moment. Like, when Vanessa and Morgan simply lean forward and lean back amidst together, you know, in their crossovers, it it created a moment. And his just looks, um, like it's on the fly. I just he's still the guy that messed up worlds like incredibly you know like with, yeah. in his shoulders and there's always that element of it when they compete even though every mistake is not his fault um, but if you watch like his camel position not as nice as hers doesn't fully match and Dylan used to match her more on certain elements but Dylan had did every lift like this which was also a risk for getting invalid lifts every time although gosh I was at four comments when they had a near lift disaster in um in the free i think it was yeah. no maybe it was a short i can't remember but it was like a it was a very scary moment like it, gosh i just don't know what to think the problem to me with their with the entry into the throw is that she does she did spot it before she did it and to me if you're going to do the cool lift i even though you have to check where you are and maybe it was just cuz this rink is smaller i think that I think spotting it is a little, like it takes away the coolness, right? Like you get cool points for doing the, but you can't spot it, right? Like you have to- Yeah, and again, I understand the idea of like a cool slide down the back as a a concept, but it literally did look uh, muddled. And it did, it, I I get that it's supposed to look like a quasi lift. Didn't do that with Barish Nye and Sikralitsa in every, and it always looked like a mistake. It always just looked like they're effing up, right? Like that she loves that kind of stuff. I know. I don't know if I really love that entry. I would probably, they should probably switch. They have to be clean and consistent. So they usually have the best death spiral, especially back outside. They only got a level three here because they didn't get around enough times. Um, and their lift... The shoulders come up a lot in it, too. Yeah, on the death spiral. Yeah. The lift was a real problem. Like, that... It just looked like they just off time and like kind of like got a little dicey, especially in the change of position. Um, they got a little close in the footwork. But overall, I think it's going to be a solid short program, but ultimately more of the same. I know Bruno was breaking down. I was just going to say, more of the same. It's a similar vibe to the program. They just need to skate it well. That's the kind of, because they don't, I know that they worked on the twist over the summer. They were working on the throw triple S, but we haven't really, the twist looks maybe a little cleaner, but more of the same. No throw lots, so they're going to have to be really consistent. And then... Also, the senior Bs are going to be harder this season because there are only going to be four of them that have pairs. So in terms of getting points, there aren't going to be pairs held at every senior B. So it's going to be harder for all the pair teams to get points. So their team Mm -hmm. is going to have to really be consistent from the get-go. And hopefully they can be. It's just, you know, I think it's year six together. It's the time to kind of like do it otherwise yeah and it's i mean you used to say this about the shibs and i thought it was so smart and you were like you have to give us a new reason to look at you yeah and i feel that's a little bit where we're at with this team it's like more kind of the same music more kind of the same vibe same kind of elements same kind of delivery of those elements like it's just like perpetual now i feel like she sells it well i mean she did have the mistake on the toe but yeah, they're going to have to be really consistent. They're going to have yeah. to. I really think that they need Megan to work with them, even though she doesn't. But I, I right. think they kind of need that uncomfortable 
energy. And then I just want Yeah, to a little pressure. A yeah. little like, come on now. Maybe they've gotten Because Bruno too is like so nice. I think you need that. They need someone to kind of push them to the next level yeah. a bit. Yeah. And, uh, if that's their goal. If they want to break clearly, through to a next thing, something it has to shift broke, in intensity. She broke up with Dylan, although Dylan was kind of looking really old and tired of, right at the Olympic season. But I think it's her time to really shine. Otherwise, she's worked super hard to get back to where she was. So, right. Which was one step below the podium. You know, like she right. needs to kind of really go right. for it. And she has the potential to be really clean and consistent every time. Does he? I'm not sure. Like, I, I don't know. It'll be... I'll be curious to see their long program. I did love the kind of literal choreography at the end where they say, like, that's love on the brain and her body is leaning against his head and then she, like, rolls down. I thought that was a cool ending. I said... I, I did give that credit. I enjoyed the ending. It was, like, a, it was a neat concept whether or not they, like, kind of hone it as it goes on, but it was a it was a neat idea. So I, I liked that they all... They had really cool transitions into all of their elements. They had really... They're doing those difficult entry into the into the camel spins, which Luba and Charlie were also doing. Um, and they didn't work with Julie Marcotte. So everyone's going for the difficult entry there. He almost missed his camel spin, and I think she would have killed him. They clearly thought the program was an effing disaster, and her face after it was hysterical. Yeah. They got a 70, I believe, which was the most Canadian score of all time, and even both of them were laughing at it because right. it was not um, a 70 performance. So, but it was... Um, hysterical and I I loved it I just like <laughs> I yeah, thought the whole thing was interesting yeah. I think they look good I think it's the first pancake but I think we need like to figure Michael out like sports psychologist Megan and like and presence general presence all come up with something yeah tricks and like ballet he can go with Keegan Keegan needs to go so you know, what do you think of Keegan Messing at this juncture, John? At this juncture, I don't know. I found, first of all, I forgot how much we had been having to watch that Charlie Chaplin program because now with two new programs, I was like, oh, thank goodness, at least we're beyond that now. There's, let's riddle me this, Dave, because I look at these deep knees, I look at his incredible speed, I look at his incredible edges, and I think, are these not outstanding skating skills? But yet, why aren't they? If what I, if I look for like a like a deep edge and a deep knee, he is giving me that. So his right? posture and his it's overall some, there's control. There's a disconnect. His speed is incredible. Yes. And like when he gets into certain moves, you are like, whoa! Especially in person, I bet it really makes a huge impact. But there's a disconnect somewhere. Keeping the soft knee between the turns and his footwork, he sometimes goes on a stiff. You could tell like his actual change of edge is not always great. But he does get really deep in the knee, and he does have great speed. And he's trying to skate bigger. And I did notice he's someone who's done more shows. Mm -hmm. You know, probably more stars on ice now that I don't remember the exact roster, but now that Patrick has moved on and he probably gets more attention and opportunities. I did notice that I thought that both music choices were spot on in what mm -hmm. he needs to be doing. I thought that the Chaplin program needed to go like a long time ago. It's hokey, it's vomited, it's horious, like it's nauseating. Uh, I thought he looked good. Um, he needs to be consistent and he needs to like really work on the ballet because he has the Elvis Stoico quality with him and if he could just go to ballet class like twice a week because I think it's right there yeah the problems for him is he has some of the fastest spins in the world like Megan is right when she said that when she was like he's the best spinner and everyone's like what are you talking about Megan and it's like well from just a speed point of view yes However, you look at the camel spin and it's like Elvis Stoico ugly. So he, and I think that with a little bit of like positioning and like a Russian ballet coach who's going to be smoking, she could get that. It's not, you look at the position, it could be good. He's well, that's what I'm saying. Where Elvis is, you kind of knew it was, it was never going to really be anything but that. You knew that it was never going to be anything good. I feel like they could stretch him and pull him a little bit. And it could make all the difference in the world because he could get really high 
GOE on his mitts. I thought that he was skating bigger and projecting. Bigger. He yeah. was projecting this way up, and it was a really nice move. I think it was at the end of the short program, where it's not just an IJS spin that ends and then the program ends. It kind of unwound, and his arm like unwound with it and came back into his heart. And I was like, that's like just lovely. Yeah, it's like a lovely little detail. I think a, there's something here. He needs a couple cool things. Like he needs like a back headless scratch spin or some yeah. just like wow moment because he can do the quads they're a little bit inconsistent and he can pop and he has to stop well another deep knee i mean he lands in like a backwards lunge every time it's insane he is a fighter he is trying harder you could tell in practice and in competition than either nam or conrad and it's interesting because conrad orzel looks like he could be on 90210 like he looks like he could <laughs> be like a a he has the best body for skating he has the best costumes, the best look. Like, they're just waiting to throw him in a commercial and throw him all the points to the judges. And he is the least confident, the most stiff when he's competing. And he's giving you the Yeah, look. there's a stiffness because you can tell he can move beautifully. Yeah. Now, in that free, he put in the quad lots and the two quad toes. But there, you know it's, like, just kind of a, you know, yeah, but cross your fingers Brian's and see what happens. Like, I have questions about Brian as a coach sometimes because I feel like Brian gets a little bit into the points like Tom Z. But if Conrad can't, has never shown that he's able to compete and perform, like he's so tense and it seems like if he can't sell and be confident with the, with the content he has, how is he going to do the quad lots? I mean, he right. was popping and having like the crossed legs in the air as if his brain... Well, on the triple axle himself. in the short, it was like an open delayed axle of Robin Cousins era. <laughs> like... Yeah. Like, there's clearly some, like, something stopping him in his brain from being really good. And, I think and even if you, if you watch that takeoff for that triple axle, he goes into it and then stops himself. And then it's like, no, you, you have to keep going and add it like a little hop to try to still make something of it. And you can see exactly what you're talking about. This, like, there's a tension why there. don't I? Yeah. Like, he clearly needs, like, to work with Jenny, like, constantly. He has, she could tell him how pretty he is constantly. He has the best costume in men's skating. I was obsessed with it. I want that. Okay. Price. But he was like fatutsing with it before he started. And you're like, it's just going to come out again when you do the quad. So what, right. what is going on here? Yeah. Um, yeah. I hated the free skate. I don't know what that music was, but I was not a fan. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a superhero film that I should have seen. I don't care, all right? But it's a, that was when the tight back was, like, really a distraction. He got quite stiff. I hated it. I hated yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but I, I like the short if he could actually skate it. But he's yeah. giving you tension and nothing. But he is right. so talented. And you could tell he's got a great... He probably can do the quads in practice. But there's clearly something missing. And I don't know what priority he is on the coaching and who's working with him, but... He needs, like, Tracy all the time with him to right. make him feel right. Jason Brown special. Like, he needs to do that. I don't know. Find his way, yeah. Because I found that Keegan is giving us, like, so much. Like, just constantly. And it's 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 intoxicating in its own way. And he has the least, right? Like, Nam yeah. has a better, better stretched leg than Keegan does, naturally. Nam has, like, had the junior success. He's, like, he had more of it. Keegan was always in like a low ranked American skater. And right. somehow he worked his butt off and has overcome all of that and is super successful. Nam, I feel bad when I watch him skate. I really like it's like I want him to do well almost in a pity sense. But it was mm. funny to me that Canadians were acting like there was almost a rivalry between Keegan and Nam, because I see none of it. Like Keegan I think is yeah. so Superior. Well, because he's proven himself a better competitor. Yeah. So even if, even like you're saying, if there are certain areas in the talent department that Nam naturally has over Keegan, Keegan has maybe worked harder at, at being a stronger competitor or something. And why would they give him blues for Kluk? Is it just to develop him to try to get him to project? <gasps> I finally watched that gymnast you sent me. Yeah, she was the first one, Sylvia Mitova. I mean, it's stunning. Yes. It's stunning. I did not know of Bulgaria's history in <laughs> in no. gymnastics. I know that they were sponsored by a local person to get yeah. them there. Um, but it was lovely. Of course, my ultimate program for that was um, Dice Gate. So Sylvia Mitova did it. Then Usa Zulin did it. 
and it's kind of like trickle down, but it's always the super eccentric avant-garde kind of skaters. Like Takahashi did a great version when he should have beaten Patrick. And Ford. sensual also. It's yeah. a it's a modern sensuality in it, and um, I don't know that that would have been my first guest for. It's interesting to know a Nam because he has he had so much personality when he was coming. Remember at that Worlds when he was sitting in the in the box you know for the long time where they're like forced them to be and right he was, the camera was just on him and he was so charming and had personality but he doesn't he doesn't have that confidence and that swagger on the ice and it looks like he's really lost it since 2015 and they're trying to get it back but before he did the quad sow triple toe combination like he's skating loose for kluke and like this music is so intricate and difficult that something is happening on every measure of music like da -da, right. da -da, da -da, and your body has to be responding and doing something and he's like in and out and to me i get that they might be trying to stretch him and work with him and get him to perform more but to me this emphasizes how much he's lacking. it shows where it's not happening yeah, yeah i i get that a little bit because it's easier to hide behind a michael buble you know kind of razzmatazz number um, even then, I don't know that he was hiding he so well. He's but... talented. I mean, he can do the quads. Yeah. But... And, oh, and the, the spring he gets in them, like, there's yeah. some real jumping talent there for sure. But I think the confidence is not there. Um, yeah. But I don't think, I think this show program's got to go. I think it's got to go. Some One fan has even wrote and was, like, offended by the music and thought it was gross. And I'm like, hmm, so you never saw Dice Gay Skate Twitter? You never saw Usman Zulin? Usman Zulin? Yeah, I mean, that even one was like also Even, like, Tiffany iconic. and Jonathan last season? Like, this is... Right. Like, <laughs> it's not new. This music is there. It's meant for, like, talented people, but, yeah, not suitable for Nam, but... Right. That's not the music's fault. Yeah. I, I just... I don't know. It was a weird choice for me. I think they need to go back to something sticky until he... For the short, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so this event that happened in Japan last weekend, like one of their small local competitions, we saw Cowrie's program. Wakaba did the short, not the free. They said she was sick. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but Cowrie also didn't skate great. Uh, swingy, triple flip, under rotated triple toe combination fall the wrong way on a badly cheated triple loop. Uh, that loop fall looked very painful. Because she fell the wrong way. Like, yeah. The... What's going on with the Japanese ladies? Even in that footage of them all doing the triple axles from camp, like none of them looked in fighting form for this season. Are they tired? And someone, if someone was saying they feel like that's how Kaori always starts. <laughs> And I don't recall that quite being... But how is she going to... But maybe we're looking at her closer, though, but... But if you are not in... How are you going to get the triple axel if you are not in your top form? Like, how is that going to happen? Right. I don't know. Well, and I don't know, like, are they looking to... I'm unfamiliar with this event for them in the past. Is this a new event? Like, is this their answer to Russian test skates? Like, I, I'm unfamiliar with what this whole strategy is for that. This is like the North York competition that was happening in Canada. Who knew? I mean, who knows? Well, uh, kind of. But this whole, like, triple axel skate off or whatever that whole thing was, I don't know if their federation is trying to cultivate a thing, but it's not working. I don't know. It was weird. They didn't seem... I, th I imagine that Cowrie looks like she'll do a million run-throughs and be ready to go in a couple of weeks. I just don't think that she's going to show us more than she showed us last season. And I also feel like we keep using Benoit to mask what she lacks as a later lady skater, but at what point does she actually need to improve where she's deficient as a lady right, skater? Right, instead of just coming up with ways to hide it. Yeah. Because I do it's think, like I do think all you things considered, only... this is a good hiding program for her. It's like Piper and Paul. At a certain way, you can only do so many gimmicks, and then they're going right. to say that you're not the best ice dancer. Right. Um... Yeah, I don't know. She's so talented. The bevel axle was so gorgeous and such a great landing to it. She has such quality. Uh, I think she needs better music. And I don't know. I was not... And the kiss and cry, uh, in particular, after the short, was icy. Yeah. <laughs> the, the main coach, you know, the one that does the back slap, yeah. uh, she wasn't sitting with her. She was putting someone else on the ice, but there was no acknowledgement of their presence. 
she went and sat on that weird love seat. The um, the woman that was with her, like, kept closing her knees together. Like, Kauri tried to have, like, a, oh, wow, what an annoying skate that was moment. And she kind of reprimanded her. And then you saw the whole energy change. Maybe, maybe there's not a good energy happening right now in that training it. camp. Well, there's not, because Mai Mihara is the other girl who trains there, and she has the rheumatoid arthritis, I believe. Anyway, she's had been having a lot of health issues, and I know people were really concerned when they saw her at a recent event, and it seems like she's not going to be competing on the Senior Bs, so they're trying to get her back for the Grand Prix. So I think there is a lot of stress and tension. Yeah, there's, I think there's a troubled energy it just maybe happening in that camp in general. And Kauri is a big star, and there are a lot of expectations, and that wasn't the kind of skate that you would want right. to have. So. I get it. Like, I think she'll be okay, but I just think it's, sometimes you have that kind of rough time period to get through whatever's going on, and then you have to get... Better to have it in August, you know? Yeah. I think she's still extremely talented, can jump, out jump most of these ladies, <laughs> whether on these triples, and I think that she'll be okay by the world, but it's not having her best time period right now. They say that Yuna Shirewa is skating well. Um, we didn't see her video, but the reports were that she has shown some improvement. But I, she's always kind of that skater that's hiding in the background. In, uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So I'll be curious to see if she lights it up a bit. But yeah, um, Yuana Yokois is trading a triple axel, as is her younger sister. Um, and they landed one. And so I think Japan is having some more talented juniors um, that are coming up because last year they seemed lacking in yeah but there seems to be a handful now that are going to make a real go for it so let's discuss the rest we had Tukta Misheva also show her skating freedom. in the mall she was skating in a, I don't know where it was like what was the situation with this video I didn't know I didn't care with 355 double axles in the opening <laughs> she's clearly two minutes. Gonna do, she's clearly going to do the two triple axles in the beginning that she was planning last season. Right. To me, it's like more of the same gimmick from her. Why yes, yes. The real, it was the exact same thing when we were talking about how I felt maybe when KMT's program started. I was like, all right, yeah, here we go. Listen, and I'm for right, Elizabeth, it was just a lot of posing, Listen, a lot of almost Canadians, slinky. Canadians always think that like we are the same. Uh, uh I was the one who liked Tessa and Scott and I was the one who liked KMT, so they need to hate on you. Anyway. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Everyone oh, thinks that I am the B, but I like I'm KMT. Like... I like her. That's never been the issue. <laughs> oh my god. Um but but same thing with with Tucci Mishima. It, it it it's just yeah. Okay, here's another version of the exact same thing. Which I know people like claim like for example um, Gabby and Guillaume were doing, but I was like, I don't see that, but I do see this. Like, this is so blatant, and just so formulaic. Like, gross. She, oh. Yeah, I don't understand her motivation because she's going to have a rough road ahead. But she's always an entertaining competitor. Like, her infectious personality does come through, even if you root for her sometimes, even though you don't know why. There's yeah. an endearing quality to her. Right? Yeah. It's like, she's endearing, she's exciting to watch. I think because she wears her heart on her sleeve, and we like to see that. We like to have... Yeah. She has I would just like to see it a bit in the program. I know. And so it's, it's an interesting concept that she has so much when she's not skating and kind of puts it on hold when she is skating. And I felt last year that everyone was loving her tweets so much that they were overlooking a lot of what was happening on the ice, and she had a lot of goodwill, right. and as long as she lands the triple axel, everyone loves her and doesn't care about right. the rest. And I right. think as long as she does, because she has the big jumps, not like the Atari rap jumps, I think people will get behind her as long as she can land the triple axel. My advice she's been around the longest. My advice to her, I don't think anything in the program is going to change. Just start tweeting. Just start tweeting, being funny, whatever. If you were having someone help you with the tweets last year, whatever you were doing. Start your campaign now. Start yeah. your campaign now. Tweet. Tweet against us. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Everyone will get behind you. And it'll be like the Tukdemisheva, like... Tour. But you'll have goodwill. Rising mm -hmm. in the ashes after not going to Worlds last year. People will act like you're the new Mariah Nagasu. Like, just yeah. keep tweeting. Keep yeah. tweeting. Get the PR campaign going because the program is more of the same schlock. Like, right. it's, we've seen right. it. 
I don't know why she bothers getting a choreographer when they take out every piece of transition and choreography right. for the program. Like, we know what right. mission is going to do. If it's just going to be you standing there on two feet and just waving your arms in a moment. Literally, she just means, like, blaring yeah. horns and a clap and, like, mm -hmm. just, like with swivel the hips, a little arm waving, and land some jumps. Mm -hmm. Still one of the greatest jumpers of all time. Like oh, Beautiful. In those, like, 37 opening double axle size, like, God, it's just, like, textbook. Yes. <laughs> And then we saw Johnny We Are Skating to Love Story. Right. Very flowy. Does he try to be as gimmicky as possible? Like, have you noticed that the more he... I was trying to in, think. Yes. This reminded me of, you know, what what movie was it when we were young when everyone showed Brian Boitano skating on the glacier? Yes. That was in that ABC special. Okay. Yeah. And you're like, okay, we know that this is like, this is what skating is. Like, And I feel like this is like kind of a cheesy version of like... Someone going out there and being like, I am going to be so expressive <laughs> and just like have the wind blowing through the chiffon and like, look at how I feel these things. I mean, it seems a bit like he's showing you what moving skating looks like instead of actually moving I you with the skating. Skating so much and I hate his program so much because you can tell how lazy they are. You can tell. That yeah. They're, slap they're like, if I do this move, you'll all think it's super artsy. He still does have the best half Ina Bauer like sh forward that we've ever yeah. seen and the best extension, but yeah. you could tell he puts no energy or effort into training this program. He is capable of so much more and it's more of the same from Johnny, but it is yeah. so beautiful. However, yeah. The Carolina Costner laying on the ice, kneeling on the ice bit was like the greatest pro skating schlock I think we've ever seen. I We needed it. I, you probably we did need it. it. I loved it. I, I loved it. every minute of it. <laughs> I didn't care what was going on. I just, I've missed her so much. I'm excited that she is going to rock the rink. I don't want to see her in any group numbers where she is no. wearing like any of that corny shit that Tessa loves because she thinks... Yeah, like a denim is. jacket or something. No denim yeah. jackets, none of those yeah. tights. Like, I yeah. want to just, like, let her be beautiful, Tessa, and, like, let her change during the group numbers. Don't yeah. reduce yeah. her to that. Put yeah. Caitlin Osman there. She's corny Canadian. Right. You can be corny Canadian and everyone will love it because they just love you. But I do not want to see her in any... I don't no, want to no, see no. her, like, with, like, 80s hair, like head banging like none of that okay this is carolina costner she needs to be like treated accordingly <laughs> in like a commercial for italian chocolates or something yeah right? like that's exactly right yeah like there's but you know what it was like she's one of the few and i love that tom z always used to compare his skaters to her he'd be like she didn't have good pcs marks and then she just figured it out and it's like yeah but that's because she worked on it <laughs> and like that's good basics to begin that's with. the whole point like she was so gangly for so long and as we like jokingly like talk about my obsession with the giraffe like skaters this is one who suddenly came into her giraffeness yes. she realized at one point it wasn't a liability it was her strength and she owns all of that height. You know, Paul, it's easy for someone like Paul Wiley to skate big because he wants to take up all that space. At 6'5", I never stand up straight, but I find people much shorter than I do always stand up straight because they're trying to own it. Paul worked on that. He worked with Carlo. He worked with John Nix. He worked with Mary, the greatest choreographer of our time, to hold it That's in. That's right. <laughs> do a hand thing. <laughs> But I mean, to see her like own that height and like that her arm, it's like it reaches the other side of the arena and that's what's so beautiful about it. Oh my I God. loved it. I found the biggest tall giraffe skater of all time from 96. I like think that we have located him because he seems to have like disappeared from skating. There is a skater named Ryan Donnelly. Okay. From the Yarmouth Ice Club. Jonathan, he was the tallest giraffe in the junior men's. I don't know what he, he had the most beautiful camel spin and like popped. I'm gonna have to go back and watch that then. From okay. the '96 Junior Men's. Okay. Okay. Tim Gable won, and it's well, you have to watch Tim Gable because he like swivels his hips and is like very Tim, like no presentation going on, but just like jump, jump, jump. He, he was laying the groundwork. <laughs> for, yes. These were the Carol years, weren't they? Yeah. Yes. And okay. it's all about Ryan Yankee's Brian Boitano imitation program and costume where he's a military boy and the most beautiful skating. And you're like, why? 
could we not have like fixed you and gotten made you world champion because he was the greatest? Okay, you have to mm. watch that. You have to watch this Ryan Donnelly. He's okay. so flipping tall in the junior men's. Like, I don't know where he is. We have to find him. Can anyone unearth like who was this boy? He seemed to have disappeared. He is like seems to have vanished. Come on the show, we're gonna talk it out. <laughs> <I would like laughs> we to can recap in. the junior nationals. And whatever happened to that girl that trained with Bob Young that like Victor Petrenko like saved her life? We need to find her. Right. She would be an intriguing person. Like these were people that we Okay. And you know, I've been on a hunt for these videos. So I did post, you know, one of my favorite skaters, Tiffany Stiegler's programs, that Swan Lake in the juniors. Okay. Jonathan, I would cheat for her in the singles. I would cheat for her yes. in the stands. I would cheat for her in Paris. Yes. I don't care. I don't care if it's like everything that Megan Hamill probably hates, like all presentation and no technical elements. I don't care. All right? It was so <laughs> fabulous that like Megan, I would, just I would put Tiffany Stiegler above you even if you landed a quad, okay? If yeah. Tiffany is just a flapping those her like Swan Lake arms, skating to Romeo she and Juliet. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. She skated to Romeo and Juliet with her brother and I was there for every note and didn't care. <laughs> the Shibutani's used to bitch about how difficult it was to skate with your sibling. You know what? Tiffany did Giselle with her brother. She probably did Carmen with her brother. She did Romeo and Juliet with her brother and acted it out. And I didn't care. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would have given them everything. Were they the ones that owned all the car dealerships? Yes. And yeah, Rue McClanahan, okay. if you go on the website, Rue McClanahan would get her car, like, fixed by him. She's the Tiffany that Sasha would say hello to in the kiss and cry and like I think Tiffany is the bigger deal than Sasha like she was clearly the bigger talent they just amazing they just needed to get the brother clearly checked out of skating at a certain point and we needed to move her to ice dance soon. yeah they just they kept the dream alive too long but it's, it happens sometimes yeah. I'm sure the mom is like still upset about it because yeah it's so cute to see them skate how did they wind up in every special they had the sister that skated with John Zimmerman before Kyoko. Right. I just justice for Tiffany, okay? Yeah, justice. Hashtag justice for Tiffany. Do you know that she has a daughter that skates with like a big pink and purple bow and like looks like a mini Tiffany, like like in dance? Love it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, if you have these home videos, please contact us. We will pay you to get these digitized. We need to. To watch Jim Peterson comp compete in the junior pairs at 26 years old. Jonathan, it's the greatest, okay? You need to watch it. Tomorrow must be... Yeah, because that wasn't the one that... Because the one I went on had the copyright issue. That was the free. The short program is... Okay. I have to, I have to fix I the free because someone skated to backdraft. <laughs> and uh, of all the things. Of all the, the things to have given you the copyright issue. It was backdraft. So we need to mute okay. that one program. Who skated okay. to backdraft? I don't know. But I'm mad at you for it. It was on fire. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> anyway, did you see Gracie Gold land the triple outs, triple toe? And I did, and I just wanted to ask you, based on things we knew about previous posts from Vincent, if you felt that this was um, something that happened recently, or if this was archival footage. You know, that's a tough question, because people say yeah. that like there's like conspiracy theories about when all these videos were filmed. But based on how bad she looked at Russia, don't you think that it has to be? Because like, then you would be saying that she somehow could do a triple lutz, triple toe when she got there, which we saw that she couldn't do anything when she got there. Then she did a triple lutz, triple toe. Then she got that out of pre preparation that she looked like that. That doesn't make sense. I believe that this is a current video. Okay. It, just the timeline would not make any logical sense. Okay. Um, yeah, and I just hope that they give her content that she can do consistently at regionals and sectionals so she makes it through. Because as long as she right. stays clean, they're going to cheat for her and give her all the points. So, yeah. It's true. <laughs> and then it's have true. you been following that there's like a John Curry tribute thing going on with some of our favorite skaters? Uh, more Good skaters mark. who we want to see in these, in these home videos. Mauro Bruni. We want to watch him. Oh, yeah. Okay. We want to okay. watch Devin Mock. They skated together on Holiday on Ice, and they're skating together again, doing John Curry's Afternoon of the Fawn. And Mark yeah. Reddy is in this show. All of our favorites. Okay. Some beautiful stuff, like in the clips that I was watching it's on that page. Be like us and Sandra Lucemore, all about this show for John Curry, okay? And like Ty Babylonia, all right? This show is for like five people, and we're here for it, okay? Yes, and we will love it. <laughs> we will love it. I want to watch him and Peggy skating to Tilt-A-Whirl. I hope that that's... Uh, I don't think that that was maybe 
going on, but I would like to watch this. So Okay, okay. <laughs> I cannot wait for a video. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, so we have, um, to conclude, you hate um, Julie Marcotte. Um, oh my gosh, KMT in conclusion. KMT <laughs> should send her hate mail to you. No, stop it, stop it. And you're for the Fallout Boy program. I, I, I think that there's potential there, yeah. All right, so... In the comments, we really want to know, what do you think about Shoma's um, music? Uh, are you obsessed with Nathan's footwork? How about the Fallout Boy and... Uh, and what was the Nina Simone situation? I'm, I'm curious to learn a little Simone bit more situation about that. situation, and let's ranking Canadian pairs. So if Deanna competes at Canadian Nationals, can she beat Luba and Charlie? Like, I believe that everyone yes. was so worried about Luba and Charlie, but I think they should be more worried about... Deanna and Deanna as a Canadian being so blunt and Canadians being so Canadian. And what's your take on the Quebec Wah? Hold an edge. <laughs> Look sexy and leave a comment below. Bye guys.